In September 2023, I set off on a crazy adventure to help my 77-year-old friend Steve realise a lifelong dream of hiking 230 miles across the Scottish Highlands. We knew the trail would take us through some of the most remote and wild landscapes Scotland has to offer. And although the scenery would be stunning, the terrain would be a challenge. But nothing had quite prepared us for what we had in store. Join us on our adventure. Okay, good morning everybody. Yes, it is day four on the Cape Wrath Trail. Now last night, obviously, we stayed in Curry Hully Bothy, which was absolutely glorious. Um, and we had a nice fire going. We had another four people staying in there with us and we had a jolly good chat and it was really nice. Uh, today, the water levels have dropped significantly. So we feel a lot better about doing the river crossing. Oh, well, we just had a little bit of a climb up to here, but we can now see the bee lag that we're headed for, which is there, that V shape at the bottom of the V up there. Um, that's our first uh, target for the day. What a relief! The storm had died down overnight and it was now safe enough to tackle the next section. We are 200 metres up. We've got 271 left to go. It's fitting, but only very lightly. Happy bloody days. Woo woo! With the water levels back down, it was easy enough now to start the multiple crossings we had that day. There is a clear path for most of the way up this climb that crisscrosses the river. River crossing number two, winding back across. Let's see Steve go over. Cold feet. Uh. But once your boots are already saturated, you kind of get used to it. Unfortunately, my gaiters couldn't keep the water out, but I was still glad I had them as they kept the worst of the bog and mud off my hiking trousers. As you near the top, the trail disappears and you need to pick your own path out. I didn't film much of this section as it was a bit of a scramble and I needed my hiking poles. Well, we made it to the top and uh, I have to say I'm feeling relieved. <laughs> Even in gloomy weather, the view down the valley was beautiful. We were thoroughly enjoying ourselves. And even though having to take a half day yesterday had been a bit inconvenient, I think it had done us some good to give our bodies a rest. If you love hiking trails, you can find the Cape Wrath Trail along with hundreds more on the Hiker app. It's packed full of fantastic features. I'll leave the link in the video description. We're sitting on a rock, <laughs> enjoying the view on the way down from the, uh, what do you call it? B-Lag. A what? A bee lag. Bee lag. Bee lag. Bee lag. That's what I call it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the V shaped thing. Yeah, it's a bit slippery, but <laughs> perfectly doable. Slippery, yeah, yeah. Went over a few times. Not gonna lie. Not dead yet, though. Not dead yet. No, <laughs> absolutely not. We're doing it. Woohoo! Mm. Hashtag get me to the lighthouse. Get me oh, to the lighthouse, yeah. Gary. This was actually Steve's second attempt at doing this trail. He made it to Shield Bridge with a friend a few years back, but has been desperate to complete it ever since. I really hoped I could help him realize his dream and all of this severe weather wouldn't get in the way. The trail was stunning and I could see why he was so in love with it. What's that, Steve? Sun cream. You're optimistic, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Free it's free. a beautiful day. <laughs> you never know. The rain had stopped. Happy days! But the ground was so muddy, 
Every few minutes, one of us was going ankle deep into the bog. Okay, so we've come to a part where you most definitely do cross the river. It's not showing on the hiker app that you cross, but I've made um, a custom way mark. I've added it to the map so I can let them know when I'm home. Uh, yeah, at this point, you definitely cross over because it would be very difficult trying to get round on that side. And you can see a definite trail. I'll show you, I'll, sh I'll spin it around so you can see properly. We had been following the very definite track made by a 4x4 vehicle, which winds all the way down the valley. The Hiker app's newest feature allows you to add custom waypoints to your GPX map. Click the icon and then add the new waypoint. This will add a marker to the centre of the cross on your screen. If you then double click the marker, you can edit the details for that waypoint. So here I am doing it now. I'm naming it so I remember what I put it there for. You can also go into more detail if you want by writing some text in the description box. Another cool feature, you can choose a waypoint type which means the picture on the waypoint icon and there is a whole list to choose from. And once you've done that, you can choose to share the waypoint, open it on Apple Maps or even plan a trail from your current location to the waypoint. The track we followed crossed us back and over the river a few more times. Man down! Man down! You all right? You're not in the trenches now, Steve. Come on. Woo! Smashed it. Not dead yet. Shall we film or shall we help him? I'm gonna go and help him. We were getting tired now. It had been a long day, full of climbing, river crossings and wading through bog. We had really enjoyed it, but it does take it out of you. We made it to the bridge. Proof he's still alive. We made it to the bridge. That was an adventure. Lots and lots of glorious bog. After a while, you just give up and wade through it because you think, well, I can't get any wetter or any dirtier. So lots of river, cross river crossings, which was fun. Um, Steve fell over more than I did, but I still did. You did, but I still, I still took a few tumbles, but he was definitely down. It was man down, man down. But um, forest track now to the Bothy, three miles left to go. Feeling positive, smashing it, yeah. At this point in time, a forest track sounded great. It would be nice to have a change of scenery for the last few miles and some solid ground beneath our feet. I always loved the woodland sections of any trail. There's something very calming about being in the forest. We had a bit of a climb for the first little section, but the path itself was solid, which really helped. Just a quick one. If anyone's been up this way and lost their pants, we found them. Someone's pants, someone's dirty pants. Yeah. We made it. We had completed stage three on the app and reached a cool boffy, our home for tonight. Not bad at all. Three rooms, two fireplaces, and even a cot set up ready just for me. Perfect. I could sleep in a separate room to Steve and get away from his snoring for the night. We're in the Bobby. 
We are cooking up a storm. What is on the menu tonight? Well, it should be macaroni and cheese, but a little dog. Uh, <laughs> going for nice another fuel meal. Hot and savoury. This time, Steve is going for a mac and cheese variety. We've been very, very impressed with the hot and savoury by Huel so far. So bear that in mind. Cheapest chips works out at under £3 a meal. And um, yeah, very lightweight. Good choice for stuff like this when you've got to carry like a ton of food with you. I wouldn't do the protein shakes again or the meal replacement shakes again because they're too faffy and they the shaker isn't very good so you end up like with just loads of powder at the bottom they're just too faffy to like be you know doing on the trail but you live you learn you don't know until you try these things so we are stopping here tonight at the minute it's just the two of us here but we shall see we thought it was just going to be two of us yesterday in that last one and we ended up with a full house so we'll see who comes plodding along you never know Okay, time to move on to stage four on the app. We were a day behind schedule, but luckily had packed an extra day's worth of food just in case we didn't reach our resupply boxes in Shilbridge in time. Here we are now, 12.3 miles left to hike today. Good morning, everybody. This is day five on the Cape Wrath Trail. And last night we stayed in Akuli Buffy. I don't know how to pronounce it. That's what Steve told me. So if it's wrong, blame Steve. <laughs> Anyway, we had a nice night in here last night. Managed to get a fire going as well, which was great. Um, it's going to be a dry day today. And look at this view. Absolutely outstanding. We're looking forward to it. Going to smash out um, a few more miles today if we can. Try and finish the end of stage four on the hiker app. It kind of ends up in the ass end of nowhere. So I can't give you a name of where we're going to end up. But we're just going to push on. We're going to see how far we can get try and catch up on ourselves a little bit to try and make sure we get to Kinlock Horn tomorrow if possible but only time will tell you never know what the trail is going to throw at us today so we're going to crack on let's do it What a glorious morning and what a difference a bit of sunshine makes after days of rain. Now this section was beautiful and fairly easy going until we crossed over the bridge and the ground conditions got pretty bad. We made it to the top of the climb for today. It was extremely slippery, very boggy. Pretty woodland though. We're at the top now. Feet are still like ice because I've got two wet pairs of socks on and wet boots. But I'm trying not to get my dry ones wet. There's no point in putting dry ones on because my boots are so soaking through. It's just not worth it. But yeah, so cold wet feet, but it's gonna happen and they would have only have got wetter anyway. I'll show you some of the bog we've been traipsing through. Happy times. Lovely. This was going to be the running theme of today. Mud, bogs and more mud. But the views on this section, well, they totally made up for it. Steve is having a snare. What snack are you going for? Snackaroni and cheese. Sun's out. Had a snack, cheeky little snackaroo. Yeah, filtering some water, trying to stay hydrated. Don't let dehydration ruin your vacation. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Here we go, a chance to wash the stinky bog mud off our boots. Living the bog life. I've been in up to my knees. Steve's had a few little tumbles. 
I'm at the front, so uh, I am the guinea pig. If I go in way steep, then Steve knows not to dread there, which is always good. But I think we're coming up to some locks soon, so that'd be nice. But the scenery is just beautiful in this valley. Absolutely gorgeous. I'll show you some shots to see where we're taking this little break. It is lovely. I think there are always sections of a trail that will take your breath away. And sometimes you just need to take it slow and take it all in. I am chilling on a rock by the lock <laughs> with a cock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there he is. It is 12 o'clock. I am a lyrical gangster. <laughs> it has taken us a long time to do this section because of the ground. Okay, obviously it's been raining for days and days and days, really severe rain and the uh, terrain is just treacherous. Every step you're taking, your foot's going right de deep down in and you're having to drag it out after you. So it's, it's tough going. We're averaging a very respectful one mile an hour. <laughs> We've got just under three miles to get to the Bothy. And then we're just going to have to crack on and push on and try and get as much done as we can. I don't think we're going to do the full whack, but we can only do what we can do in these conditions. But enjoying it. Scenery's gorgeous. He's not dead yet doing my job. Uh... Okay, we've come to a point here where we weren't quite sure which side to go on. The high crap is saying one side, but it looks like there's more of a path on the other side. So we're going to go the other side and hope for the rest. Fingers crossed. Bad decision. We ended up stuck on the wrong side with no choice but a very steep retreat. He's sliding down on his bum. Now what had looked like a path suddenly came to a dead end when we were quite high up. Scrambling back down was steep and time consuming. We're back on the right side of the gully. That was an ordeal, but we made it. We made a sensible choice to backtrack, climb up the other side and we're back on the trail. Silly sausages, should have stayed this side the whole time. Our first view of the sea. We continued onwards towards Suli's Bothy, set in a stunning location right on the water's edge. To our surprise, it was surrounded by a herd of very friendly deer that didn't seem to mind us getting up close and taking photos. It was a wonderful experience. We also met a group of men who were staying in the Bothy that night who very kindly donated us some extra food in case we got held up again. We made it to the Buffy eventually. Luckily, tide is going out. We've had some lunch and we're gonna crack on for a little while and try and find a camp spot at some point. So yeah, I think we might have to do a little bit of wading, but hopefully not too much. Won't come up too high. How exciting being at the beach. Just need a knotted handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time to get wet again. We needed to wade around this outcrop to reach the wetlands. Although the water was quite warm compared to the rivers we had been through earlier, there was a lot of slippery seaweed.
more deer. They were everywhere. We felt very blessed to see so many just chilling out. We crossed the wetlands to the bridge where we joined a well-defined track for a few miles up the valley. We carried on for a few more miles before setting up camp. It had been a long day and it had taken us quite a while to find any ground dry enough to pitch on. So when we found some, we didn't want to risk going further, even though we were three miles short of finishing the stage. What you doing, Carrie? Batman! Batman! Batman. <laughs> How about Batgirl? <laughs> no, she was well, it's seven o'clock. We've set up camp. Uh, I've just had some food. Uh, we're in a really nice spot. I'll show you where we are on the map. Um, we're not taking chances. We've gone a little bit higher up this time because uh, it's due rain again tonight and we don't want to risk it. It's quite windy though. Uh, wish we could have found somewhere a little bit more sheltered, but but stuck for choice on this section. We are running behind, I'm not gonna lie, We're running behind schedule. That um, having to wait the night in uh, Glen Finnan for the water levels to go down didn't really do us any good. And we didn't quite do as many miles as what we were supposed to today because we had a couple of mix-ups <laughs> of the route and had to backtrack a bit. And yeah, we're just a bit knackered, but whew. Tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. We originally planned to get to uh, Kinlock Horn tomorrow. I can't see it happening from here. Mm, not with the speed that we're going at the minute because Steve needs quite a few breaks, obviously. Um, and of course, the ground is so, so wet from the persistent rain. It is just like swamp. It is literally wading through swamp. Um, but we're just gonna do our best. We'll see, see where we end up, see what we can get to. Yes, I'm knackered, so I'm going to say ciao for now. Bye. <laughs> Running up that hill. Running up that hill. We had quite an eventful night. We're going to um, just start where we left off in the last episode. We camped here, wherever this is in the valley. <laughs> and we had a almighty bloody storm come in. So for about four hours last night, we were holding onto our tent poles like this. Ah! trying to brave out the storm uh, luckily we camped higher up we didn't get flooded like we did the first night in episode one um but we did get an onslaught of wind it was crazy this morning it's all died down hence the midges first time we've really had a problem with them so far um yeah and it's time to just crack on let's see what today's got in store i know we've got a big climb to get up to the next bothy so we're just preparing ourselves mentally after not a lot of sleep but we can do this let's crack on with it shall we What a night. We were exhausted before we had even started. The winds had been so strong, we'd been up most of the night trying to stop our tents from collapsing. I'm not gonna lie, this bit going across the river going adjacent to the river it is an absolute bull ache. The path is just, oh my God, non-existent. The rocks are so slippery. Um, because of just all the rainfall, all the storms, like the puddles, you're stepping into them and you're going knee deep. So you're trying to like pick your way around. It's just ridiculous. Ah, it's taken us 10 years to do one sodding mile, but we're going to persevere. We've just got to the edge of the little woodland bit that you'll see on the map. It's not really much of a woodland bit. There's trees at least. And then uh, we start climbing up. So hopefully, maybe we'll climb up a bit away from some of the bog. You just never know. Probably not. We'll take it as it comes. The lower path we'd been following had eroded away in parts. So we thought it was safer to scale up the side and try and take a higher route around that section and then back down again. we reached the most beautiful area that looked like something out of Lord of the Rings. And although we were shattered, seeing this instantly lifted our spirits.
We had 700 meters of elevation to tackle today, most of which wasn't on a path. We had to find our own way through the bogs and rivers. Now I consider myself a positive person and usually I won't let things get to me, but the combination today of no sleep and the exhausting scrambling were making it very difficult. Don't tread here. What happened, Steve? Fell in a <laughs> hole. <laughs> Up to his knee in a hole. Literally couldn't get out. Had to take his bag off, crawl out. Nightmare. Progress is slow. Well, what can I say? This morning has been tough. It has been bog. It has been slipping through knee deep puddles, slippery stones. There was a really dodgy bit down by the gully. We decided to come up and do it a little bit higher up because it looked lethal. Some of it had been looked like it had been eroded away as well, so just be careful on that bit. Um, we're just starting a big old climb. We're trying to get to the to the track that leads us down to the Bothy, up to the Bothy, should I say? Um, I think we're just kind of going to wing it up to the track. We're going to follow the hiker up, but it's not on a path. It's just kind of like giving us a direction. So. We're gonna do that. We're just gonna keep on trucking. Keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on trucking. Steve. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. So we kept trudging up and up. just need to be up there, that's all. Just gotta get up there. We found the footpath. We have finally finished stage four, halfway through day six. So as you can see, we're lagging, but in these weather conditions, what can you do? That was a struggle. Every time we were putting, um, putting our foot to try and take a step to get up the steep bits we were just sliding back down the ground is just it's just giving away underneath us but we're here Woo! i'll show you a little clip of where we are there's a very wet steve there he made it four miles to go to reach barrysdale bothy We were running short of daylight hours, so we had to get our heads down and plough onwards these last few miles. Apologies for not filming much of it, the descent was tough and four miles felt like double, but eventually we reached sea level. Made it to the buffy. Looks a bit exposed. Now that was a welcome sight. Well, we made it to the Bothy. We are now wearing dry clothes. <sighs> I've eaten, uh, set up all my sleeping stuff. We've at the minute got a room to ourselves, which is nice. There's quite a few lads staying here in the other room. Um, and I'm just, I'm just exhausted today. I think it was the lack of sleep last night from uh, trying to hold my tent up in the storm. <laughs> But we're here, I'm gonna try and get a good night's sleep tonight, despite Steve snoring. Oh, I'm just gonna have to try and put my earplugs in or something. Um, still no signal, no 4G. I'm really missing Danny, really wanna drop her a message and just have a chat and see how she is. Pfft, gonna have to wait another few days, I think. Well, I'm gonna say good night. Gonna get a relatively early night tonight, I think. Over and out. See you tomorrow.
<laughs> what? <laughs> this is cruel. <laughs> How are you feeling, Steve? Fantastic. Having a nice rest day? Yeah, I am actually, yeah. It um, seems strange sitting around doing nothing, but yeah, it's uh, probably done us both a lot of good. Yeah, but we've had to wait it out because of the storm, didn't we? Tell me about the storm last night. Oh, I don't think there was a lot of sleep uh, again last night. The last two nights have been horrific. The, the, on the positive side, we were actually in a bothy this time, so we didn't have to worry about it getting blown away. But the people in the tents last night, they had to they had to come in in the middle of the night and woke us all up, didn't they? They did. And Their they tents had, blew down. <laughs> they had the noisiest air mattresses that you could possibly imagine. So um, it was like, um, I don't know, thunder, lightning, and everything else going off in the bed, in the uh, sleeping area. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, but um, we're still here, and we're going to soldier on and uh, see what tomorrow brings. Yeah. We realised then we were going to have to start rationing our food. Steve's first time trying the Huel powder. It's a bit lumpy. <laughs> Let's take a closer look, shall we? Mmm. I'm not going to say what that looks like. We've taken a different approach and tried adding hot water and making it more like a dessert. Actually, it's not bad. It'd keep you alive, wouldn't it? Survival food. Well, it's having to, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and tune in to find out how we get on in next week's episode. <laughs>